right. Amen. So if there was even a desire or a thought, something that he had put in your heart when you were younger, ask him if now's the time to revive that. Amen? He doesn't not hear us. Just sometimes it's not now or not then, but this could be the season. Amen? Let's call those dead things forth and let's know that the power of the Holy Spirit is within the guests and we have the authority to change the atmosphere. Amen? Amen? Amen. We aren't, we aren't, ther we, we should be the, the thermostat wherever we go. We should set the temperature. Amen? Amen. We are children of God that were created for a plan and a purpose and that was to make him known and to advance his kingdom okay mm -hmm. and you guys know all of you know that there's a resistance when you try to do that but the answer is but god amen, amen. he says if my people who are called by my yeah, name come on. would humble themselves and pray and turn from their ways right we all know it chronicles we're over in the first chronicles 7 i believe he says, then I will heal them and their land. Amen. 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 That doesn't mean just our land. That means our children and our children's children from generations to come. When we came to this property, I said, Lord, what should we pray about? And I was praying for the people. He says, no, you pray for the prayers that have already been prayed yeah, here. Amen. Because this is the season that they will come. So I'm believing that in Tahoma, in Tahoe, the revival, that we are going to see the grandchildren of those that prayed the ground. Amen. We are going to see the revival take forth in the name of Jesus. And I just ask you guys to keep us in prayer. Amen. amen. Katie is just absolutely amazing. Yes, we are here, amen. sent all the way from Riverside to help her fulfill the vision that God gave her and her husband. Amen. All Amen. the way. And that's how much Amen. God loves every one of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this coming week, Katie, am I allowed to say it's going to be your birthday? No. <laughs> no. It's going to be it Katie's is. birthday it's on the 11th. Week. It's on the October 11th. Yeah, you got it. Right? On the 11th. 81? Yeah. 81 years wow. young. 81 years young. amazing? Oh, okay. So I just want to remind you, just in cake, because we love cake, right? Yeah. We yeah. love cake here. <laughs> just in case, it's Katie's birthday on the 11th. No it's frosting. on a Sunday. It's right? on a Sunday. So if you do plan Sunday. on making a try to put it on your yeah, calendar, it is. it is on a Sunday. Yes, it is. And then we have an event coming up on the 18th. I believe we're going to be doing it here. Is we'll be correct? here. Oh, uh, yes. It's, uh, what's, uh, what's the name of the group? Oh. Salvation Center. Sanctioned Love. Sanctioned Love will be coming here on Sunday, October 18th. Uh, to do a worship service with us here yes, at 2 yes. p.m. Yes. We'll have church in the morning as usual, our normal 10 o'clock service, and then they'll be here again at 2 o'clock uh, to come in and have a worship service and do some live music. Yes, Amen. and then also on that Saturday, um, the people from Reading that bring the music, the younger crowd, they're going to be doing something on Commons Beach is where they're planning. It's at 6 o'clock. No, they're going to be at Dana's house. They said Friday, Zephyr Friday Cove. Friday at Dana's. And they said Saturday, Saturday at, Commons, at Beach. Commons Beach. They just sent me a new flyer yesterday. So That's I'm not sure. Change, yeah. That was the word that I got. Okay. Okay. So you guys were using that as a, a, a way to reach the community. Amen. Amen. And if Amen. you guys could be a part or anything, it's wonderful. We just pass out flyers. And we do want to remind you that we've started a Bible study on Wednesday night. Wednesday night. It's over six at Tahoma. Yeah. Tahoma Lodge, 6 yes. p.m. So if you could join in our us, cabin. yeah, in yeah, the free. cabin or out front or wherever you want to be, amen, it's wonderful. So we have worship and we'd like to encourage you guys, okay? And please continue to pray because God is going to do something powerful through this ministry, amen. 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 Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Pastor John, and I'm so excited to be here with you guys this morning. I'm, I really am uh, excited to see Mike and Alita here this morning. We want to welcome you guys and th say thank, thank you, you for coming to join us this morning, amen. Uh, we're missing a few people this morning. I know Sue's not with us this morning. Is no, she okay? She's with her daughter. She's with yeah. her daughter this morning. And Diane is, her husband is, they're camping. They're camping. Yes. Amen. And keep uh, Diane's husband, his name is Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Keep them in prayer. He's He has cancer. cancer? Yes. yes. Amen. We'll continue to keep him in prayer. Amen. This uh, little bee has been following me around all morning long. Hallelujah. I must have some. It's the sweetness of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> or the donuts. Hallelujah. Know, or the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> or the donuts. Yeah. Amen. If you have a Bible this morning, let's turn to Philippians chapter 3. If you need a Bible, we have some extra ones here if you'd like to read along with us. If you do, just raise your hand and we'll get one for you if you'd like. Amen. This is a Bible believing, Bible doing, Bible practicing 
uh, church. Amen. We, we, uh, we have an intimate relationship with our Bible because the Bible is the roadmap for life. Amen. We've been talking about in Philippians, this will be our last message in the series of, 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 of Paul's letter to the Philippian church. And we've been talking about some powerful things, man, over the last few weeks. We've been talking about the joy of suffering. And man, I know those are two, uh, two words that don't really go together. But as we learn in Philippians chapter 1, Paul is writing this letter from jail. And he's talking about how much joy he has because he's so full of the Holy Spirit. I love this because this is amazing as he's writing this letter to us. He's reminding us that no matter what your situation is, no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what you're facing in life, that you can have the peace of God and the joy of God amen. on the inside of you amen. as you're doing the will of God. Come on, amen. somebody say amen, amen to that. Amen. amen. And as you're doing the will of God, God will begin to meet your every need. I love this. Let me share a story real quick, and then we're going to jump right into our word. Uh, back in the 30s, the Santa Fe Railway had a locomotive that was called the Super Chief. The Super Chief. One of my favorite preachers wrote about this locomotive, and it was a, uh, it was a train line that went from Los Angeles, it started in the 30s, went from Los Angeles to Chicago, Illinois. And this, this Super Chief train was built as the strongest, most luxurious train uh, of that day. And they made it so strong because they had introduced new diesel engines into that train. And, and this train was made specifically to be able to go over uh, the, the Cajon Pass and go cut through the mountains and get all the way to Kansas City and to Chicago and all that area. And so what would happen is previous versions of, of a train uh, struggled to get through the mountains in those days. They carried large loads and they carried people. But when they introduced the super chief, the super chief would go from Los Angeles to Chicago, no problem. It would get over the mountains, go through the hills and valleys. And as long as the super chief was on its tracks and doing what it was designed to do, amen, it didn't have any problems at all with its, with its roadmap, with its, with its destination and its port of origination. Amen. Now, the super chief used to pass by Williams, Arizona. And Williams, Arizona is where it would stop and let people off because a lot of people wanted to go see the Grand Canyon. Now, here's what's so funny. I want to take a little bit of liberty here and just say this. That as long as the tr train was on its tracks going where it was supposed to be going, it had all the power to do what it was designed to do. Come on, somebody. Watch this. this is power. This is amazing. It had all the power to do what it was designed to do. As long as it stayed on its tracks and stayed its course, it had all the power to do what it needed to do. But what if the train said one day, you know what? I drop off a lot of people in Williams, Arizona because they're going to go see the Grand Canyon. Well, I would like to go see the Grand Canyon one day. <coughs> And so the train decides all of a sudden one day to get off the tracks to go to Williams, Arizona and go see the Grand Canyon. Well, what happens to the train when it gets off its tracks? It derails. It derails, right? So all of a sudden, watch this, all of a sudden, what the train was designed for when it comes off its tracks to go do something else, it loses all its power. Come on, somebody, say amen to that. Watch this now. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me Strength. strength amen but when we are see you and i are designed to serve god in a certain way you and i are designed to to put god first in our life you and i are designed to walk with god god amen. should be our only god come on somebody amen, without amen. distraction without this uh dissuading without anything else god should be the one that we serve come on somebody say amen, amen to that amen. and when we're serving god rightly and we're staying on the tracks then, then we can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives us strength. Amen? Amen. When we are doing what God called us to do, come on, when we are walking the way God called us to walk, when we are doing the things God said for us to do, amen, then we can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives us strength. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That's powerful. That's powerful because here's what's happening. Watch this. Paul writes to us in Philippians chapter 1 about the joy of suffering. I gave the example one day that Paul's sitting in the jailhouse and he gets a visit. And he goes into the visiting room and he, somebody, one of his disciples comes to see him. And he's sitting there in the glass, sitting between the glass 
the disciple sitting on the other side, they pick up the phone and they start having their visit. And as he picks up the phone, the disciple says, oh, Pastor Paul, I love you so much. And I'm so sad to see you locked up in prison. And I know that you're hurting and I know that you're suffering and I know that you're going through some bad things. And my man, my heart just goes out to you. And Paul looks at the phone and he looks at the guy across the window and he says, why? Why are you so worried about what I'm going through? If God wants me to be in prison, I'll be in prison. If God wants me to be free, when he wants me to be free, I'll be free. If God wants me to be rich, I'll be rich. If God wants me to be poor, I'll be poor. If God wants me to be wrecked at sea, I'll be wrecked at sea. If God says I'm going to go to the other side, I'm going to go to the other side. Why are you worried about what God is doing with me? I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. If I got to suffer for a little while, it's okay. Because I know it's only temporary. And God will do something because I'm following him. Because I'm serving him rightly. I'm in the exact place where God wants me to be. Amen. I am here with you this morning. There's two, four, six, eight, ten of us. Amen. Well, there's 40 of my other church at Church in the Park in Riverside. Amen. I could be in Riverside. I could be comfortable. I could be doing all those things back there. But God called me to be here today with you. Amen. Why? Because there's something he wants you to hear. There's something that you need to understand about God. God is a good God. Amen. God All is an uh, awesome God. All the time. God is an amazing God. Come on, somebody. All say the time. Amen. amen. So Paul talks to us about the joy of suffering in chapter 1. Chapter 2, we studied last week. He talks to us about the joy in humble service. Remember we talked a bit about this last week? Here's the problem with our churches today. Mm. And I mentioned this last week. I'm part of the problem as well. The church has deviated from preaching the God of the Bible to preaching the God of what makes us feel good at the time. Amen. It's not about that. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. We have popular pastors all over the TV yep. all week long that say, you can live your best life now. <laughs> you are more than a conqueror today. Come on. You are the right. And they fluff you up and they fluff you up and they fluff you up. And here's what's happened in our culture over the period of the last decade. Amen. We have pastors who have become rock stars at the pulpit. Amen. Worship Amen. leaders, uh, famous worship people who are making albums now, making tons of money, uh, making, selling worship songs and all this stuff. And, and wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm not saying there's anything wrong about it. But here's what's happening is over the last decade, we are guilty of preaching self-esteem and not preaching self-control from on. the pulpit. Come on. And so now we have a, a culture of church people who want their best stuff now and want everything now, but they don't know what it is to serve their fellow man. Yes. They don't know what it is to come under a, 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 an elderly woman and say, okay, I'll put my church aside, I'll put my house aside, I'll put my stuff aside, and I'll submit to your leadership to come and help you. Come Ooh. on, amen. Wow. Woo. <laughs> That's power. Because that's what the Bible teaches. That's the God the Bible teaches. Humble service. We talked about John 13 last week. When Jesus puts the towel around his waist. Mm -hmm. Takes off his stuff. And he starts washing the disciples' feet. Amen. Amen. So today, here we go. Chapter 1, the joy in suffering. Chapter 2, the joy in serving. Chapter 3, the joy in persevering. Yes. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. How many of you know God has called us to persevere? In the face of difficult circumstances, while we're going through some tough times, while we're in the struggle of our life sometimes, God has called us to persevere, to stay the course. And if we stay on the tracks, come on somebody, then I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We saw this when Peter, when, when the storm was raging and Jesus uh, comes walk to the disciples walking on the water. Remember this story? Peter says, Lord, if that's you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. He says, come on. Peter climbs out of the boat. That's just, he puts his, his first leg over the boat. He's climbing out. And the disciples are looking at him and saying, what are you doing? Don't go out there. You're going to die. <laughs> he says, well, the Lord told me to come. I'm coming. That's right. So he climbs out of the boat. And as long as his eyes are fixed on Jesus yeah. and not on the weapons of mass distraction that are going on around him then he's coming to jesus walking on the water and he's walking and he's doing good and he's walking and he's doing good but then all of a sudden he starts to notice amen 
that's a little windy and the water starts slapping him in the face and all this <laughs> stuff starts to happen. And he takes his eyes off the Lord and he's looking around at the circumstances and he begins to sing. Come on, somebody. Now you're preaching to the pastor. Watch this. If he would have kept his faith on Jesus, his eyes on Jesus and stayed on the tracks, then he could do all things through Christ Jesus who gives him strength. Come on, let the church say amen. 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 Get into the word today. Wow, I got something good. I got something good in the word today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Well, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we give you praise today, Lord God. I'm so honored, Lord God, and thankful. Lord, to be here in Lake Tahoe, Lord God, with this group of people this morning. Lord, you don't do anything by mistake. But you have a divine purpose in every look in the eye, every handshake, Lord God. Every time we get together as a group, as a community of believers, Lord God, you are ready to, Lord God, release a fresh anointing, Lord God, and a fresh impartation of your wisdom and of your word, Father God. Help us, Lord God, this morning to grab onto your word, to hold onto it, Lord God, like we've never held on to anything before. Because, Lord God, you said in your word, the days are evil. We must know, Lord God, how to serve you rightly and walk with you rightly, Lord God. So, Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would open this word for us, Lord God, today. That our eyes would be open to see, that our ears would be open to hear, and our hearts would be open to receive what you have for us today. Father, we give you praise. Now, be with us, we pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody says, Amen. 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 Philippians chapter 3. Let's get started. Verse number 1. Finally, brothers... Finally, brothers, rejoice in the Lord. Remember, Paul is writing this letter to us from prison. And all through that, chapter 1 and all through chapter 2, he said, rejoice, you guys, rejoice. Now, here's what happens with us. Happiness is what happens on the outside. Mike, you, you, sell, a, you sell some big products or you, you make a good deal, man, and you come home and you tell Alita, man, babe, woo, come on, let's go celebrate. <laughs> Something good happened today. And so you get your happy dance, man. You're... You're all excited. But here's what happens on the days when you don't sell something big and something good doesn't happen. Then all of a sudden your attitude is down and you're, uh, right, the outward circumstances are, are not happy. They're sad. It's something that you're struggling with. So happiness can be, comes from the outward circumstances, but joy comes from the Lord. Come on, somebody say amen, amen. to that. Amen. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the Spirit of God, amen, God gives you the joy from the inside. That no matter what is happening on the outside, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're struggle with, amen, you have the joy of the Lord on the inside. Amen. Let the church amen. say amen. 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 Wow, look what Paul says. Finally, my brothers, rejoice or have joy in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again and again. And is it a safeguard for you? Oh, I love this. I love this. You know, my people in Riverside, are they get sometimes uh, tired of hearing me say the same things over and over. <laughs> but I tell them, I tell you those things so that it will become ingrained in you. Amen. I tell them catchphrases all the time. They said, Pastor, we never heard anyone with so many catchphrases like you have. <laughs> And I said, that's okay. I said, I want you to know it so that when you get in a situation, those phrases those will be phrases. automatic. Amen. Amen. I used to tell them that I used to be out there on the streets, tipping and dipping. I used to be hiding and sliding. I used to be peeping and creeping, Mom. Come on, I was out there doing it. Amen. Amen. So now when I hear them repeat that, I go, oh, man, they learned something from me. Amen. Amen. I would tell them stuff like this. New levels bring new devils. <laughs> Um, right, so one of our girls, Jennifer's right-hand man, she'd tell people when she meets them on the street, don't you know that new levels bring new devils? And she starts <laughs> preaching to the people, amen? Watch this. Amen. Paul says, it's no problem for me to write the same things to you again. And why? Because it is a safeguard for you. Amen. Amen. I grew up and I was a little bit hard-headed when I was young. Come on, somebody. A little bit? Sometimes, uh, uh, Sometimes I had to learn by being told over and over again. Men, I know I'm the only one, but I'm just saying, come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Men, we do get a little stubborn, amen? Yes, we do. Amen. Watch this now. Mm. Oh, I thank God that he cured me of that. Yeah. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Don't you love when God cures you of something? There's two kinds of people. Listen, there's two kinds of people sitting here today. Those that learn by revelation and those by learn by tribulation. <laughs> Yikes. Right? Yikes. Yeah. 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 You could tell me and I could learn it. Or I could go through it myself and experience it and then say, oh, guess what I found out. <laughs> Amen. Watch this. Watch out, verse number two, for those dogs, those Gentiles, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. He's talking about the Judaizers. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Come on. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence. Oh my God. The Judaizers were coming behind Paul. Paul would go to a place and preach and then he would leave town and then the Judaizers would come behind him. And they would say, oh yeah, Paul was here. Oh yeah, yeah, Paul's, Paul's great. We love Paul. But Paul didn't tell you the whole story. This is what they would do. <laughs> but Paul didn't tell you the whole story. He didn't tell you that in order for you to really be saved, you would have to follow the Jewish custom of circumcision. And so, uh, you know, you you have a nice faith in God, but faith won't save you. They pushed a works salvation, not a faith salvation. Paul goes back and he refutes this theology and he says, this false theology, and he says, no, 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 listen. He says, you have been saved by grace through faith and not that of yourselves, not anything that you have done for yourself, but it is the free gift of God. Why would you have to mutilate yourself or go through some kind of additional thing? Because what you're doing is you're diluting, you're adding to and diluting the faith of God. Amen. Amen. Watch this. This is powerful. We who worship by the Spirit of God and who glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in, in the flesh, I have more reasons than anybody. Look what he does here. This is amazing. Circumcised on the eighth day, which was according to the law, of the people of Israel, which is the good stock, of the tribe of Benjamin, which was the, uh, which was, they boasted because the tribe of Benjamin produced the first king of Israel, yes. King Saul. Remember this? He was, I was a Hebrew of Hebrews. And in re regard to the law, I was a Pharisee, which was the upper echelon of the spiritual leaders of Israel. And as for zeal, as for godly zeal, I even persecuted the church. And for legalistic righteousness, I was perfect in the way I acted and did and stuff on the outside. Now, I want to ask you a question. Why would Paul, writing a letter to the Philippian church in Macedonia, give his credentials of what a good Jew he was to people who were not Jewish? Ooh. Wow, watch this. This is powerful. Why would a Jewish man list his credentials and his achievements to a people who didn't even know what it was to be circumcised, didn't know what it was to be uh, of the tribe of Benjamin, didn't know what how important those things were, right? Mm -hmm. well, this is what happens with us nowadays. Everyone is so uh, bent on giving their credentials, come on somebody, <laughs> thinking that your credentials, that your works on the outside, somehow achieve something for you on the inside. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. now we have an educator here. She's got more degrees on her wall than a thermometer. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mike, Alita, I know you guys do too. Amen. You too, Mike. Amen. And I'm just a dummy from the streets, but let me tell you what I, what I have. 
I got. I might not have letters on the wall, but I got the letters of Paul right Come here. Come on. Amen. Come on. I might not have a bunch of. Uh, uh, I might have a, not have a bunch of letters after my name, but I've got all my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life Come right on. here. Come Amen. on, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I might be a, a knucklehead from the streets, but let me tell you what I have. I've got the love of God in my life. That's right. Amen. I have Amen. the peace of God all over me. Amen. Amen. I've got I've got the glory of God. Amen. I've got the, the righteousness of God imparted into me. And it's not because of anything I've done. It's not because of where I studied. <laughs> it's not because of where I live. It's not because of where I've been. Come on, somebody. Well, it's not anything. Yeah. It's because I have a relationship with the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the church say amen, amen to that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Watch this. This is powerful. Woo. Watch what he says here. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, he goes, I've got more reasons than anybody. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, I was a Pharisee. I was at the top. As for zeal, I persecuted the church. And for legalistic righteousness, my performance and how I behaved was perfect on the outside. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things and put them aside. I consider all that stuff rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own for what I've done on the outside that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Watch this. This is amazing. Because people, even nowadays, want to tell us that we're not believers unless we do A, B, C, and D. Mm, yeah. Watch this now because this is heavy. What we do as believers is the result of faith, not the prerequisite to right, faith. Right, right, right. Let the church say amen, amen to that. Amen. What we do as believers is the result of faith. How we suffer and have joy is the result of faith. How we humbly serve is the result of faith. How we serve each other, how we do these things, how we walk with God, the good things that we do as a, are a result of faith, amen. not a prerequisite to faith. Let the amen. church say amen, amen to that. Amen. You don't have to have good works. God is not concerned with how good you are, amen, as a believer. That's right. God is not concerned with how good you are as a believer. Watch this. God values the attitude of the heart above all else. Come on. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my goodness. God is looking at the heart man on the inside. Now, here's what's crazy. I love this. Watch this. When God sees you, Mike Bowles, and you are a spirit-filled believer, he is not looking at Mike Bowles when he looks at you. He is looking at his son, Jesus Christ, who's inside Come of on. you. Yeah. Amen. Because there's nothing that you, Mike, can do on the outside that's good enough to earn salvation from God. Come on. There's nothing that we can do by works, amen, of works on the outside that's good enough for earn to earn salvation. We can't buy it. We can't steal it. We can't earn it. We can't do none of that stuff, amen. amen. We have to receive it by faith from God. Amen. And once you receive the Holy Ghost, once you receive the power of God, once you receive his grace and mercy, once you take God into your heart, amen, then he doesn't look at the things you do anymore, amen. He looks at his son who's inside of you. And then he says, that's my son. That's my daughter. And they are totally righteous and they are totally holy. Let the church say amen, amen. to that. Wow. Hallelujah. Watch this. Woo, woo, woo. Look what he says in verse number 10. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Let the church say amen to that. Wow, watch this. Paul says, I have given up all those things that I thought were valuable. As we look back over the life of Paul, I want to share this with you. Paul gave up his family. Paul gave up his friends. 
Paul gave up his freedom to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say amen to this. Amen. Because you're not going to want to say amen after I say this. <laughs> <laughs> Paul gave up everything to serve God. Watch this. Paul gave up everything to serve God. He gave up his friends, his family, and his freedom in order to know Christ and Christ's resurrection power. In order for you to have a breakthrough, come on, does anybody here need a breakthrough? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order for you to have a breakthrough, you might first have to have a breakup right. with the wrong people, come on. with the wrong places, That's right. with the wrong things. Come on, somebody say, Amen. you might have to break up with cake. Amen. 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 You might first have to have a breakup from some wrong people, some wrong places, and some wrong things in your life. Oh, my God. Yes. Watch this. This is powerful. Because sometimes it's the things that we hold on to that keep us from reaching our full potential Amen. for God. Amen. Come on. Come oh, on. my God. Listen That's to this. That's right. Sometimes we are so connected to wrong things, to wrong people, to wrong situations, that we get our identity from being in those wrong places. I was sharing with Katie a while back that oftentimes a woman who is in an abusive relationship will leave one abusive relationship and get right, jump right in to another one. Amen. Because she only knows how to be with wrong people mm -hmm. who do the wrong thing thing and who treat her badly yep. so we see this in our society and our culture all around the world people who've been in abusive stuff amen only know and they get their identity from that abusive stuff so they go right back to it rather than get free from it they'll stay right in it yep but paul is saying wait, wait a minute listen if you're going to serve God and you're going to serve God rightly you've got to leave all that old stuff behind you've got to step out of those things that are holding you back. You got to step away Come from on. those people that are Reach holding it. you back. You got to go through some Amen. things in your life. Amen. So that uh, I said that to somebody else before I said, sometimes you've got to get dirty before you can get clean. That's right. Come Amen. on. Amen. 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 Sometimes you might have to let some people cut some people loose in your life, cut some situations loose in your life. Somebody say amen to that. Come on. That's really good. Wow. This is good. This is good. Paul says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings chapter one becoming like him in his death and so somehow to attain from the resurrection from the dead oh my god watch this in order to know the power and the glory of the resurrection of becoming a new person you must first know the personal sacrifice of crucifixion yikes Woo! Wow. Amazing. This is heavy. Because we want the things that are good. We want the blessings. But we don't want to sometimes sacrifice our old behaviors. Oh, my right. God. I said this to our, my church in Riverside one time. I said, God is a God who does everything decently and in order. Amen. Amen. God blesses those things that are in order. We have people. I have some friends in, in Southern California. Uh, the man is suffering with cancer. Uh, the, the woman is suffering with health issues. We've known them for 15 years since we lived in Riverside. And, but they've lived together this whole time. She's still married to her husband. And he's still married to his first wife. But they've been living together this whole time. Every time something goes wrong, they call Pastor John. Come on, somebody. They just uh -oh. called me the other day. And they said, Pastor, would you pray for us? We're having some health issues. We're struggling with this. We're struggling with that. And I said, Amen. Let's pray. And when I began to pray for them, I said, Lord, I pray that they would put themselves in order with you, Lord. Come on. Because they're asking for blessing. They're asking for healing. They're asking for these things. We want the good stuff from God, but we don't want to sacrifice our behaviors to do what God said. Oh, come on, somebody. Say amen to that. Oh, amen. my goodness. My goodness. This is a message for a crowd of 5,000 people. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You're getting it for free today. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. We want the blessings of God, but we don't want to do what God says on the... And be decently in order. Come on, somebody say amen to that. And this is what Paul is saying. Wait, I want to know the glory of the resurrection of God 
and I'll suffer with him as to somehow to attain to the resurrection. Now, here's what happens with us. In order for us to be resurrected and become somebody new, we've got to lay down somebody old. This is the self-sacrifice we talked about last week. Putting the old man down. Putting the old man to rest. Putting the old man with his needs, wants, and, and desires. That person has to die so that we can get the glory of who God wants Come us on. to be. Let the church amen. say amen. amen. Wow. Wow. Watch this now. This is so good. Powerful, Lord. Powerful. Watch what he says here. Verse number 12. Not that I have already obtained what God has for me. Not that I have already obtained all this stuff that I'm preaching to you about. Or have already been made perfect. But there's one thing I do. I'm taking hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. There's a famous American poet. Many of you will know who he is. His name is Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ooh. Ralph Waldo Emerson said this. This is his quote. He says, what lies behind and what lies ahead matters little as to what lies within. Yes. That's right. amen. amen. What lies behind and what lies ahead matters little as to what lies within. Now, what a Come powerful on. quote Amen. that is. But watch this. Watch what Paul says. He says, Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, or achieved any of it, but I'm pressing on to, to, take, to take hold for that which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. God has a perfect plan and will for your life. Let the church say Amen. Amen. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But there's one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind. Come on, somebody. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward amen. in Christ Jesus. Let the church say amen to that. Come on. Hallelujah. Watch this. This is so heavy. This is so heavy because remember... Paul had regrets in his life. Paul stood there, the Bible says in Acts, and he held on to the coats of the men who were stoning Stephen. Yeah. Do you remember this, Acts chapter 7? Paul stood there and he was consenting to Stephen's death. He was the first martyr of the Christian church. Now here we are years later. Paul is sitting in prison thinking about, oh my God. I stood there and I consented yeah. to a death of now who's somebody I'm going to see when I get to heaven myself. And I got to explain myself and say, I'm sorry, man. I had regrets. I had guilt. I had, I was ashamed. I persecuted the church. Remember he told us that? I persecuted the church. I was the one who, uh, who was the great persecutor of the church. And now I'm the one who's become greatly persecuted for being the church. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, wow. And so now he has regrets and now he has a uh, uh, guilt and he has uh, all these things where the devil tries to tell him all the time, what kind of Christian are you? Mm -hmm. Come on. Why do all of a sudden you want to be a goody two-shoe? Don't you remember you stood there while they were killing Stephen? Don't you remember that you killed people, you arrested them in Damascus, you arrested them here, you arrested them there, and they didn't even make it back to trial in Jerusalem because they died along the way because of what Amen. you did? And the enemy tries to eat at you with all the things that you've done. He tries to eat, of you, eat at you with all the things that you've Come on, somebody. Amen. But what does Paul say? Listen, I know that I did all those things, but I'm, the, I'm not the same man who did them. That's right. So this is what I do. I've got to forget what is behind. I've got to fun. I've got to forget all those bad things that happened to me. Amen. Right. And now I've, I've got to strain towards what is ahead of me. And I've got to reach out for the thing that God has for me. Come Let on, the church amen. say amen. Yeah. Wow, wow, watch what he says. <clears throat> Not that I have already taken hold of it, but I'm straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you've got to press on press and you've got to press in. Look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, neighbor. or neighbor, you've got to press on and you've got to press in. 
Come on, I got to press on in the things of God, and I've got to press into the Spirit of God. Amen. I've got to press on with the things of God, and I've got to press into the Spirit of God. I've got to press on to the things of God, and I've got to press into the Spirit of God. Everybody said, I got to press on, and I got to press in. One more time, I got to press on, and I got to press in. Come on, give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Verse number 15, we're almost done. A few more minutes. All of us who are mature, all of us who are mature, as believers should take such a view of, th of these things. In other words, the way we see the challenges of life, the way we see the struggles of life, the way we see the, uh, that God worked through it all, amen, the, what does he say? He says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. All things means all the old things, all the struggles, all the difficulties, all the things that we've been through, but all the good things, come on, all the lovely times, all the wonderful times, all the times of fellowship, all the times of family, all those things, everything that we've been through work together for the good. That's right. Amen. All the good That's things, right. all the bad things work together right. for the good. All the struggles, all the trials work together for the good. All the places up, all the places down work together for the good. Amen. All the places to the right, all the places to the left work together for the good. Amen. Right. Everything Amen. you've been through works for God's purpose. Amen. And this is what he says, all of us should have a mature view of our walk with God. Yes, yes. Wow. This is deep. Oh my God. Watch this. Verse 15. All of us who are mature should take such a view of all these things. And if at some point you think differently, that too, God will make it clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have all ready attain we have already re reached the point of salvation we have already been partakers of God's grace amen. we have already received the mercy of God come on church let, the, let the church say amen. amen we have already seen the goodness of God David said this he says he says I will want to see the goodness of God in the land of the living amen 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 we've already seen the goodness of God We've seen God move miracles and do miracles in our lives. We've seen God move in the people around us who didn't even realize God was already working things out for them too. We've seen God do miraculous things in our own lives and in the lives of our children and in the lives of our friends and family. And this is what he says. Live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Amen. Live a life worthy of, if you call yourself a believer, live a life worthy like you're a believer. Amen. Don't live like a non-believer. Live like a believer. Live a life worthy of the calling you have received. And let us already live up to what we have already attained in the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. Join with others, verse number 17. In following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For I, as I have often told you, and now say again, with tears in my eyes, there are many believers who live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Oh my goodness. Paul is so good at taking us to the mountaintop and then bringing us right back down to the valley where the rubber meets the road. Come on. He said earlier in the chapter, we put no confidence in the flesh. He says, I myself have plenty of reasons to have confidence. He says, but I don't put any confidence in who I used to be or what is at war against my spirit. Yes. Now look what he says here. There are many Christians who call themselves believers who live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? Because they put their confidence in the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a somebody. Yeah. Come on. You should know who I am. Yeah. I've been around the world. Uh, come on. I've been around the world. Uh, I have a website. Come on, I've got a business card with my website. I call myself Apostle John. I call myself Bishop John. I don't have a church and I don't lead anybody, but here it's on my, I got a title, it's on my card. Come on, somebody, I got a website. Amen. Why? 
We put too much con we still have too many believers who put confidence in the flesh. Yep. Too many Christians are still putting their confidence in the flesh and their pursuits and their earthly desires instead of keeping their eyes on Jesus. I want to tell you something today, church. All that glitters is not gold. That's right. That's right. And everything okay. coated in sugar is not sweet. Come nope. on, somebody say amen to that. Wow. Wow, watch this. Oh my God. <laughs> For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears in my eyes, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is their destruction. Their God is their appetites, their physical appetites. They're pursuing their flesh, physical appetites, food, drink, sex, all those things. Watch this. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their physical appetites. Their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. Let the church say amen to that. Wow, wow, wow. Watch this. So good, so good. Have you ever been to a church service where the church was full, the worship was good, and then when the pastor got up there to speak, nothing happened? Nothing happened. No spirit of God was being spoken. Though he was reading the words from the page, but there was no spirit in the words. I've been to a lot of church services like that growing up in church, where you felt sad for the person who was up there giving them. It was a great message, but the Holy, and everyone was invited, but the only one who wasn't invited was the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want to share this with you. Listen, this is important. Inform, the Bible is information. Amen. But the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the information. So you have information with revelation brings a powerful impartation. Yes, yes, yes. Let me say it again. Amen, amen. The information of the Bible, the revealing of the Holy Spirit brings a powerful impartation to the life of the believer. Yes, that's right. Information with revelation brings powerful impartation. But when you have information... With no revelation, mm. then the information is just decoration. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Amen. This is what Paul is talking about right here. We have many people, many believers, many Christians, many people, amen, who live as enemies of the cross of Christ. They're so busy building their own kingdom that they don't worry about God's kingdom. Oh, my God. Watch out, somebody. Watch out. Watch out. Here I come. Here I come. Watch this. They're so busy building their church, so busy building their kingdom, so busy building all these things, but they put God on the shelf. Look what Paul is saying here. Paul is saying it. As I have often told you and I tell you now again, even with tears in my eyes. That many live, many believers, people who call themselves Christian, live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Oh my God, this is powerful. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their physical appetites. What they want for their own glory. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. Amen. And Amen. we eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ. Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord. Let the amen. church say amen. Wow, wow, wow. Amen. The job of a Roman citizen in Paul's day they're a good citizenship. You know, we used to have when we were in school, we would get good citizenship awards. You mm -hmm. remember this? No, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was but I was really young in school, like first grade, second grade, I get a good citizenship award, you know. The job of the Roman citizens in their day was to promote the values of Rome to everyone who they came across. Mm -hmm. The job of a good citizen, a Roman citizen, was to promote the values of Rome and to make Rome 
look good and appealing to people who were not Roman citizens. Amen? Likewise, the job of a citizen from heaven, come on somebody, yeah. is to promote the That's values right. of heaven That's right. That's right. and to make heaven look good to people who are not citizens from heaven. Yes, come on, yes, come on yes. somebody, say amen, amen to that. Amen. This is why Paul says our citizenship is in heaven. He's That's talking right. to a Roman colony in Philippi telling them, wait, wait, you're so concerned of what, uh, what, what, what do we say? We say, when in Rome, do as the... As a Roman Zeus. Right, right, right. And now here we are having a little slice of heaven. All 10 of us right here. We're citizens of heaven. That's right. Let's do as Christians come do, on. amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to share with you this and then I'm done. I want to remind you Jesus didn't come into the world to make bad people good. Amen. Jesus didn't come into this world to make bad people good. He came into the world to make dead people alive. That's right. That's right. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Come on, let's all stand right where you are. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.